Hi, second graders. So I feel like it's been a while since I was reading Little House in the Big Woods. Um, I know that Christmas had come to the Big Woods. I remember that they ended up having some visitors. There was Aunt Eliza, Uncle Peter, their cousins. Um, remember when they made faces in the snow? What did they call that? Snow pictures? Something like that? I don't know. An interesting way to make pictures, right? Um, and I left kind of at a part in the middle of chapter four where they were talking about it was hard for the kids to go to sleep. They had heard the story about Aunt Eliza and the panther by the stream and how their dog prince actually rescued her. And then Ma kind of realized all the kids were awake and she was like, Pa, you need to play music and help them get to sleep. It, it would be hard. If your cousins only get to visit you maybe, what, two or three times a year and stay over at your house, it'd be hard to want to sleep. You'd want to stay up and spend as much time as you could with them. So let's find out what happened. I have to really look back and try to remember where I was at. Um, let's see. If I end up going back and recapping a little, sorry. Well, anyway, you made a lot of fuss about being thirsty, Alice whispered. Oh, that's right, because remember, they were kind of scared, too, about this whole story. The kids, um, the girl, the girls and the boy cousin were kind of scared about the whole panther story as well, because it had happened to their mom. The room was still warm and full of firelight. Ma's shadow, Aunt Eliza's, and Uncle Peter's were big and quivering on the walls in the flickering firelight, and Pa's fiddle sang merrily to itself. It sang Money Musk and The Red Heifer, The Devil's Dream, and The Arkansas Traveler. Never heard those songs. And Laura went to sleep while Pa and the fiddle were both softly singing. My darling Nellie Gray, they have taken you away, and I'll never see my darling anymore. Those were the lyrics to the song. Don't know it. In the morning, they all woke up almost at the same moment. They looked at their stockings, and there was something in them. Because remember, they hang their stockings by the fire? Santa Claus had been there. Alice and Ella and Laura in their red flannel nightgowns, and Peter in his red flannel nightshirt, all ran shouting to see what he brought. In each stocking, there were a pair of bright red mittens, and there was a long, flat stick of red and white striped peppermint candy. I wonder what that would be. Can you draw a conclusion here what that would be? Or make an inference, I should say. It's long and flat, though. It doesn't have a curve like a J. Hmm. All beautifully notched along the side. They were all so happy they could hardly speak at first. They just looked with their shining eyes at their lovely Christmas presents. But Laura was happiest of all because Laura got a rag doll. Doll is one of your spelling words. D-O-L-L. Double consonants at the end, but she got a rag doll, so no more corn husk doll. She has an actual doll. She was a beautiful doll. She had a white face of cloth with black button eyes. A black pencil had made her eyebrows, and her cheeks and her mouth were red with ink made from poke berries. Her hair was made of black yarn and had been knit and raveled so that it was curly. I'm kind of drawing a conclusion here that this doll was probably homemade. If it has button eyes and its face is drawn and like red stained berries for its lip, lips and yarn for its hair. This sounds like a homemade doll, but again, that would make sense because of what we know about Laura and her family. Um, they don't go to the store very often. Um, we know that they don't order things and they show up at their house. So that would make sense that they made the doll for her. And it's called a rag doll, made out of rags, probably. She had a little flannel, red flannel stockings and a little black cloth for shoes, and her dress was a pretty pink and blue. She was so beautiful that Laura could not say a word. She just held her tight and forgot everything else that was going on. She did not know that everyone was looking at her until Aunt Eliza said, Did you ever see such big eyes? The other girls were not jealous. Because Laura had mittens and candy and a doll. Because Laura was the littlest girl, except baby Carrie. And Aunt Eliza's little baby, Dolly Varden. So, Dolly is a baby and Carrie is a baby. The babies were too small for dolls anyway. They were so small that they did not even know that Santa Claus had come, or who Santo even was. They just put their fingers in their mouths and wiggled because of all the excitement. <laughs> Laura sat down on the edge of the bed and held her doll. She loved her red mittens, and she loved the candy. 
but she loved her doll best of all. She named her Charlotte. Then they looked at each other's mittens and tried on their own, and Peter bit a big, large piece of his stick candy, but Alice and Ella and Mary just licked theirs to make it last longer. So it must be like a candy cane, but it's a big, thick peppermint stick. I've actually seen those before in the grocery store. Like They're a big, thick peppermint stick. Well, well, Uncle Peter said. Isn't there even one stocking with nothing but a switch in it? That's for spanking. My, my, have you all been such good children? But they didn't believe that Santa Claus could really have given them just nothing but a switch. That had happened to some children, but it couldn't happen to them. It was so hard to be good all the time, every day for a whole year. Right? That is kind of hard. I mean, every day, all day, for a whole year, you're always a good kid. There aren't adults that are like that, for sure. You mustn't tease the children, Peter, Aunt Eliza said. Ma said, Laura, aren't you going to let the other girls hold your doll? She meant, little girls must not be so selfish. So Laura let Mary take the beautiful doll, and then Alice held her a minute, and then Ella... They smoothed the dress and admired the red flannel stockings and her curly woolen hair, but Laura was glad at last when Charlotte was safe in her arms again. Pa and Uncle Peter had each a pair of new warm mittens, knit in little squares of red and white. Ma and Aunt Eliza had made them. So there's a lot of homemade gifts. The peppermint sticks, I'm guessing, they must have got at a store, but mostly everything is homemade. Remember that shelf that Pa was, like, carving with his knife? We've got the mittens being made. Most of the doll, it's all homemade stuff. Aunt Eliza had brought Ma a large red apple stuck full of cloves, and it smelled so good. And it would not spoil, because so many cloves in it would keep it nice and sound and sweet. Ma gave Aunt Eliza a little needle book that she had made with bits of silk for covers and soft white flannel leaves into which she could stick the needles into. The flannel would keep the needles from rusting. They all admired Ma's beautiful bracket, and Aunt Eliza said that Uncle Peter had made one for her, of course, with a different carving. Santa Claus had not given them anything at all. Santa Claus did not give up grown-up people presents. But that was not because that they had not been good. Pa and Ma were good. It was because they were grown up, and grown-up people must give each other presents. That's kind of true, right? I mean, Santa Claus could come to my house and give my kids presents, but... I don't expect anything from Santa myself. Hey, remember when I showed you the picture of Santa? Have you guys told your family about this? When I went to Mexico last winter, Santa was there. It was right after Christmas. Totally made sense that Santa would need a vacation. And why wouldn't Santa go to Mexico, right? It's Okay, I'm getting off topic. Anyway, then all the presents must be laid away for a little while. Peter went out with Pa and Uncle Pete. Sorry. Peter went out with Pa and Uncle Peter to do the chores, and Alice and Ella helped Aunt Eliza make the beds, and Laura and Mary set the table while Ma got breakfast. For breakfast, there were pancakes, and Ma made a pancake man for each one of the children. A pancake man. Ma called each one in to bring in their plate so she could stand by the stove and watch, while the spoonful of batter Ma put on for the arms, the legs, and the head. It was exciting to watch her turn the whole little man over quickly and carefully on the hot griddle. When it was done, she put it a smoking hot on their plate. Peter ate the head off his man right away, but Alice and Ella and Mary and Laura ate theirs slowly in little bits, first with the arms and the legs, and then the middle, saving the head for last. <laughs> it sounds so weird to say that, right? Or to hear that or envision a pancake man. How would you eat your pancake man? Hmm, that could be a really good attendance question. I could draw a pancake man and I would ask you, how would you eat your pancake, man? Just pick the whole thing up in one bite? Or would what, what would you do? Think about that. It's kind of fun to think about. Today the weather was so cold that they could not play outdoors. But there were the new mittens to admire and the candy to lick. And they all sat on the floor together and looked at the pictures in the Bible. And the pictures of all the animals and the birds and Pa's big green book. Laura kept Charlotte in her arms the whole time. Then there was Christmas dinner. Alice, Ella, Peter, Mary, and Laura did not say a word at the table, for they knew that children should be seen and not heard. Think about what that means. Children should be seen and not heard. Remember, they're pretty strict. Remember how I talked about that? 
what they expect of the kids, what they expect them to do, how they should behave. It's different than what I expect of my kids or even what was expected of me. So it's kind of interesting to hear it from her perspective. Different time, kind of comparing that past and the present right now. But they did not need to ask for second helpings. Ma and Aunt Eliza kept their plates full and let them eat as much as they want. Christmas comes but once a year, said Aunt Eliza. Dinner was early because Aunt Eliza, Uncle Peter, and the cousins had such a long way to go back home. It's always kind of sad. But the horses can do, Uncle Peter said. We'll hardly make it home before dark. So as soon as they had eaten dinner, Uncle Peter and Pa went to get the horses hitched to the sled, while Ma and Aunt Eliza wrapped up the cousins. They pulled heavy woolen stockings over the heavy woolen stockings over their woolen stockings and their shoes were all ready that they had on they were wearing they put on the mittens and their coats and their warm hoods and their shawls and their wrapped mufflers so i'm going to show you a picture of one of the cousins getting ready and one of the cousins already with her stuff on and then i think you can tell which one's laura can you tell who laura would be she's got her new doll there it is look at the cousin in the middle look at all her layers she can probably barely, like, put her arms down or move. And the other one you can see, like, she already has on her stockings and her shoes, but now she's pulling more stockings over that. Didn't hear anything about snow pants, did you? Boots? No. See, again, that past and present. Things have changed since then, especially for me, too. I had snow pants, all of that kind of stuff. Now, they do have warm hoods and mittens and coats mufflers so mufflers were like these like pouch things that they would put their hands into and they would wrap them around their necks too they had thick woolen veils over their faces like a scarf i'm guessing ma slipped piping hot baked potatoes into their pockets to keep their fingers warm and aunt eliza's flat irons were hot on the stove ready to put by their feet in the sled the blankets and the quilts and the buffalo robes were warmed, too. Did you hear that? Piping hot potatoes. Hey, all you hunters out there. Hmm. That could be a very economical way to have hand warmers. Put a hot potato in the oven. And once it's really piping hot, take it out, put it in your pocket. And then it would be a way to put your hand in your pocket to keep your hands warm. Eventually, the potato would cool. And you could eat it later. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Ask your parents for help on that one, or if that would be okay. So they all got into their big bobsled, cozy and warm, and Pa tucked the last robe well in around them. Goodbye, goodbye, they called off. And there they went, the horses trotting and the sleigh bells ringing. In just a little while, the merry sound of the bells was gone, and Christmas was over. But what a happy Christmas it had been. I know I'm always really kind of sad once Christmas is over. Like today... You know, when you think about it, like, Halloween is done now, right? Halloween happened, it's over, and we have to wait a whole year before it comes again. Christmas, too, it's exciting. Now we're getting ready for Christmas. And then all of a sudden, Christmas is over. So I can totally relate to Laura when you feel just kind of sad, that, that moment of just that letdown, like, oh, the holidays are over, all the excitement, the gifts, the food, the friends, the family. That hasn't changed, has it? That's stayed the same from past to present. But it definitely was different in the way that they celebrated it. Some things that were the same and some things that were different. In the classroom, we could do a compare and contrast. Maybe we'll do one together one day. Um, it got me to chapter 5. I'm not going to read chapter 5. I'll save that for tomorrow. But I was going to show you the picture. And look at Laura. She's sitting on that chair. And then look at her doll over there. She doesn't look too happy, does she? So now we're kind of settling into the long winter months. What in the world do they do during those long winter months? Christmas is over. It's kind of that long cabin fever time, they call it, where you're just, you're in between. You want to get to spring, but it's, you still got a lot of winter to go. So I hope you enjoyed listening to the rest of chapter four. Until next time, see you later, second grade.